Siena seems peaceful and in order when viewed from the 100-meter bell tower that rises high above the city and the Piazza del Campo. Once, Siena had many towers. Building one was how a family demonstrated its power. In 1419, after a political quarrel, the Salimbeni family was expelled from the city. Its palazzo was confiscated and made the seat of the first bank in the world. For 500 years, the Monte dei Paschi Bank contributed to Siena's affluence. That ended in 2012, when the bank ruined itself with an expensive merger and risky financial derivatives. The bank's president had to resign. The public prosecutor is investigating the bank's practices. Several former managers are under house arrest. Unfortunately, we were the site of one of Europe's biggest financial speculations, to the tune of 20 billion euros. Now this money is gone, and we're sitting on a huge mountain of debt. The city of Siena is not only hard hit, it is impoverished. A painful blow for once rich Siena. Through a foundation, the city was the bank's biggest shareholder. Hefty dividends provided plenty of money. It was easy to walk across the Piazza del Campo to ask the bank foundation for money. Money was always forthcoming, lots of it and fast. No one had to think about additional revenues for the city or about reducing outlays, and so Siena never had to learn to budget. The blogger and book author Raffaele Ascheri calls the alliance between politics and the bank the system in the shadow of the bell tower. It always ruled the city, he says, in accordance with principles all too typical for Italy as a whole. Everyone extorted each other and schemed to get the bank's money. And you avoided making enemies especially within the Democratic Party that governed here for generations and that likes to present itself as a moral authority in Italy. Ascheri's blog has repeatedly accused politicians and bankers of mismanagement. He says they are to blame for the city's huge debt. With all the money from the bank foundation, the city wouldn't have had to take taxes and fees from its citizens. We could have lived tax-free, but the money was spent prodigiously, and now we have to pay off the debts with the highest city taxes in all of Italy. Siena's hospital is one of the best in central Italy and was run with money from the bank. Now that money is gone. The renowned Musical Academy faces the same situation. Here the foundation is no longer a sponsor except on the poster. The bank has stopped being a patron in Siena. And it's the same in sports. The basketball team has been Italian champion eight times. Now, without its bank sponsor, it may lose its license. The situation is similar for the football team. The bank has cut off its funds too. Sports fans in the old city are frustrated. We thought our bank was solid and had no problem spending these amounts. But we've learned a painful lesson. They just want support from the population. And where do you get it in Italy? In the stadium, when the home team wins, whether it's in football or basketball. Bread and circuses was a successful strategy for bankers and politicians for a long time, as Siena's sports fans now self-critically admit. The effects of the bank crisis are not over. Banks will shed 5,000 jobs and 400 branch offices throughout Italy and the debt remains to be paid. The bank crash annihilated billions. They have to have gone somewhere. They can't just vanish into thin air. 
Many people in Siena want to hold someone responsible and make them pay, even if everyone knows that won't make the debt burden disappear.